Thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, I'm Gatesy. This is Forge from Iron. We're having a little stream today talking about uh, just two transfer targets that I've seen in the news today. I mean, if I did about every transfer that we've been linked to, I'd, I'd be here probably till next week. Um, but for those of you watching, um, if you haven't already done so, please drop a like on the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit the bell any new content as and when it's uploaded to the channel. Thank you very much indeed. So joining me today for the purposes of this discussion, I've got our two of our regular contributors, Mr. Andy Miles. How are you, sir? You're not bad, mate. Not bad. Not bad. Just very, uh, very good watching the Formula One. Very exciting race. And I'm pleased for Max as well. Um, huge fan of him. So, yeah, it's been an enjoyable day and looking forward to the football at five. All good. And just back from a, a nice little excursion into London, celebrating, was it your anniversary? Yeah, it's my 26th, 26th year anniversary, yeah. Yeah, oh. so, yeah, nice You'd weekend. Less for murder, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's gone quick, and um, I'm still as silly as I was back then, I haven't changed. Um, still the same. <laughs> I still feel 18, to be fair, which, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's good. I, I know thing, exactly but... what you mean. Yeah, and I'm still yeah. the same, mate. Yeah, yeah, we had a, we had a, we had a good laugh. And, you, look, uh, you look like you've had yeah. a good time. <laughs> yes, I'm in good spirits. So looking forward to this <laughs> afternoon's games as the tournament gets to nearly the series end, isn't it? So I'm a bit more pleased yeah. than I was on Friday evening after watching the England thing, put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's not get into that one. We could be here a while. Okay, so... <clears throat> We're going to crack on. There's there's two names that I've seen that we've been linked to in uh, dispatches, if you will. So the first one is the Celtic striker, Odson Edward. Now, it was reported that Leicester City were in for him. Obviously, the connection being Brendan Rodgers, who was his manager at Celtic previously. However, it appears that the interest in Edward seems to have called and they've the Leicester have now gone into a position where it looks like the in, imminent arrival of Pats and Daka will be the answer to their striker issues, if you will. Not that they really had any, to be honest. I mean, let's have it right. They've got Jamie Vardy and Kalechi Iheanacho, but this is obviously someone that's going to bulk up their striking options. So it now seems that Odson Edouard is looking for a plan B. So, and the, and the talk is, that it could be that West Ham are the ones that are possibly going to be the beneficiaries of this. So, Andy, talk to me. And Odson Edward, what are your thoughts? Do you think this would be a good signing? Would he be a good fit for West Ham? Yeah, yeah, he definitely will be. I'm not saying I watch Scottish football in abundance, but I watch him when they've been in Europa League this season. Um, it's a good threat. And also, I watch the old phone games, no matter what. I always watch the old phone games. And he always, apart from this season, he's hardly played. But in previous seasons, he's been the difference on, of the side. Um, not saying he's built like Antonio, but he's young, he's powerful, and he's quick. And he can finish. Uh, what else do you really want in a striker? Um, yeah. my, only, my only concern is it's the same when you buy anyone is the phys physicality of the Premier League and the pace. Would he be able to adjust? But if if the talk is w what I've heard is 15 million quid, 15 million quid in today's money is nothing. So it's yep. definitely worth definitely worth a, a punt. Um, I, I know we're talking about Edward, but my opinion, we, we should have done things earlier and, and got Dakar. Even if he didn't want to come, you, you, you give money talks in, in in my eyes and it would have been money well spent. So really, we're getting second choice, but it's a good second choice. Thing is, though, I know a lot of people will probably turn around and say, yeah, but it's Celtic. It's not really a great league, blah, blah, blah. The last two players that came out of Celtic, um, Kieran Tierney and Virgil van Dijk, haven't exactly done too bad in the Premier League, have they? No, they, no, they haven't. Uh, the different, the difference is with the Scottish league. Is I understand when everyone goes like it's a Mickey Mouse league, blah blah blah. It's not Celtic and Rangers. It's thought it's a Mickey Mouse league, is it? Do you know what I mean? They're, no. they're big clubs, and uh, a lot of it goes on their old traditions. But uh, I, I don't care. I don't care if we get 
someone from blooming Saudi Arabia if he scores if he scores 15, 15 plus goals in a season it doesn't matter where they come from um uh, like, like like I said he's got European experience as well obviously that's another added thing he's played in Europa League so that could be uh critical for us and obviously your video earlier about Antonio representing Jamaica if he does go that could be uh, we could be seriously in in trouble if he if Antonio gets injured, so yeah, definitely, definitely in there for the, definitely in there for the squad, definitely. Yeah, Jazz, Odson, Edward, have you seen much of this fella yourself? Not seen much of him, but when you look at the stats, uh, I mean, what's impressive is well, well, he's six foot two, twenty three. He scores more than well, basically a goal every other game, really. Um, what fifty three mm. goals in eighty seven. 17 in 14, France under 21, yet to be capped at the full level. But what I wanted to also think, we mustn't just always think that we want an Antonio type. I, I don't want Antonio playing up front next season. I want him a little bit behind, yeah. and I want two fresh strikers up front that can score goals and certainly hold it up. There's not going to be many Antonio types out there in the world. There's a few. Yeah. That, yeah. that can certainly look like the one, but looks like for one reason or another, we, we don't seem to be close to getting him, whether that's David Moyes' choice or Sutherland's, we'll probably find out at the end of the window. But certainly looks good. The figures add up. Um, yeah, 15, 20 million. Don't get much for your money these days. So I'm on, I want to sign two strikers, really. And if you remember back to, to when we spoke about what we need, I was looking at a kind of fairly strong target man, six foot two. He could be the one. And then alongside Armstrong, yeah. who's a who's a goal hanger, yeah. goal type, like Tony Cotty, like Danny Ings. So you can mix it up. So we want people on the mm. bench that can mix it up. Different scenarios. Could Do we need a late, late goal? Machiavelli, them two. Edward and mm. Armstrong together, couldn't they? Well, with the option of, like you said, they can play together. If we need a goal, Armstrong can come off the bench. And if he scores, he keeps his place. If it's a bit of a physical game, we go with the other one. And then Tony yeah. can certainly come, come up front. With wouldn't more options at the back. This is what we need next season: more and more options and and different scenarios. And um, and like I said, without talking about any other position, we focus on the strikers. In my mind, we need six players, and two of them are strikers, really. So I'm I'm all up for this because don't forget, Palo de Canio play came from Celtic, and Nick Larson, Patrick Van Hoydon. We spoke about many many good players have come from Celtic and settled in well, really, uh, in our league and. And don't forget, there's, there is a pressure playing for Celtic and Rangers as well. You know, I know they're always at the top, yeah. but they are. If anything, if you, if you look at these teams who are always at the top, when a game starts, the other team's probably got six people behind the ball. They're difficult to break down. It takes time, you know. So that's the other side of it. You might think, oh, it's easy for them. But the other side are just there to just defend and defend and defend. And perhaps these people just learn how to just be patient and score and, yeah. and the other guy was the Rangers guy, wasn't it, as well, the Colombian guy. But for me, it's a thumbs up for me, Gates. So, yeah, yeah, we need two strikers, and I'll happily take one of them as him. Good age, good build, good height, good pedigree, great stats. And coming from the Scottish League, um, hopefully it's not too much of an adjustment. You know, he's still in the sort of British Isles and still feel reasonably physical, I think, still. So, yeah, I'm all up for it, mate. And we've we, we got a lot of French people in our team that make him mm. feel wanted. We've got Conor Dupe. We've got Ben Rama speaks French. We've got um, Masawaku, I believe, Masawaku, who speaks yeah. French. Yeah, we've got a lot of players that can look after him. Yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah, um, He's in his last year of his contract as well, isn't he? He is. That's that's the other thing, because there he's in the last year of his contract. It's basically they got to, to, to get the most amount of money. they got to sell him in the summer. Otherwise, you know, their only opportunity of getting money is in the January transfer window when they're going to get virtually nothing for him. And if he, if they go to the following season, then then they're going to get nothing. Yeah. So let's just let's just have a look here. So this is transfer market and just look here. So last season in the Scottish Premiership, 26 appearances, 16 goals, five assists. One other thing I, I like to keep an eye out for is did this player have much of a, an injury record? Well. No, he didn't really. I mean, you can see there he missed a game, <clears throat> six um, six game in um, with a muscle strain. He then had two games off with coronavirus. He then had two matches where he was quarantined. But the rest of it, this is not a player that is 
injury prone and, and look at his record for the under 21s for France 14 games, 17 goals. He's got more goals than he's got appearances. Now, I know it's the under 21s, but you know, that's still mighty impressive. And his, and his minutes, and his minutes, Gatesy. Look at the minutes, yeah, yeah. all yeah, above yeah. seven. So, that's really impressive, in my opinion. And Gatesy, Celtic. where we are as a club, we're, we're never going to fall in full international. So he's yet to be fully capped. And yeah. if he ever gets fully capped, then the value will double or triple. Oh, yeah. You know, we, yeah. You know if, we, if we're going to get this guy, then we need to get him now rather than when he goes to another club and possibly hits the ground running. Let's say if he went to, I don't know, say a Southampton or something like that. And like, like Virgil van Dijk did. You know, and then he hits the ground running and then he goes on to say a Liverpool like Van Dyke did exactly the same thing. Or or Mane, again, another player that, that left because he was at Celtic before, wasn't he? Um, was yeah, he at Celtic? Yeah. I believe so before Southampton. Yeah, yeah, alongside um Van or, Dyke. No, hang on. Like you mentioned, yeah. I it? can't remember. I'm I could be, I, I might be thinking something. No, no I don't think that was, was he? he? No, no, Armstrong. No, sorry. Armstrong. Armstrong yeah. for, who played for Cel uh, Southampton uh, Celtic on Oh, okay. oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, they 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 look so similar. They could have been separated at birth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, look at his look at his Celtic record. I know, and again, I know people are going to say, "Oh, yeah, but it's only Celtic. It's only the Scottish Premiership." But again, 168 games, 83 goals, 37 assists. I mean, he's and he's 23 years of age. This is not a guy that's that's got um, a questionable injury record or anything like that about him. Mm. So, you know, I, I think that this 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 is someone and, and let's have yeah. it right. Let's not forget Leicester were interested. They they were interested in this guy. And Brendan Rogers has a very good track record in picking up players that a lot of people might not be terribly interested in and getting yeah. a tune out of them. You know, you you he's done it, you know, he did it at Liverpool, he's done it at Celtic, he's done it at Leicester, you know, players that come mm. in do a very good job. So if he was on the radar of Leicester City, you know, this this might be someone if if we've got the opportunity of picking up because Leicester have kind of called for whatever reason, whether it's a case of, you know, they just basically think that Dakar's a better fit or, you know, Celtic are asking more money than Leicester are prepared to pay. I don't know the reason behind their interest calling, but, you know, be that as it may, they have and it looks like they're going to go for Dakar. Yeah. So, well, Elson Edouard's back on the market. So, yeah, I can, you know, why I not? Can... I can. It may seem that, but you you see Liverpool with what Liverpool do to Rangers feed a lot of. You could see this deal becoming another relationship where you could see Connor Coventry maybe go out on on loan to, to Celtic. Do you know what Absolutely. I mean? To bust up their their midfield. Do you know what I mean? Like certain stuff like that. So this could be the start of something where we, we where we give them a couple of our youngsters Ma as well. Um, Marzi, I think we stitched them up with the jetty. I don't think they're interested, mate. <laughs> 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 so you had the just look at this. That one, mate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> look at his scouting report on five yards. I've pulled this up. I mean, it says team system and role within it. Edward plays as a striker for Celtic. He is as effective on his own as he is in a pair. So this is a guy, he's quite comfortable being the central striker up, up on his own or play him in a partnership, not a problem. Style of play, he likes to drift left, can also drop deep to link play. He's a scorer of all types of goals from tap-ins to individual efforts. Shades of, although nowhere near his ability, perhaps a bit like Henri, because Henri started on the left wing, didn't he? And then he transitioned mm. to a striker. I mean, it says there that we're not saying this is the next Thierry Henry. It's just saying that stylistically, he's, he's I've similar. I've got a feeling. I've got a feeling Gatesy adding Van Dijk and even when when Yama to that Celtic. I think Celtic and Rangers also have good scouts. You know, if someone <clears> Dave Unterhurst from the local leagues, because again they don't have the money Premier League have. Most of them are sold onto the Premiership for profit. So. I think that's yeah. a good sign that they they found him. You know, before anyone knew about him, and yeah. they've got yeah, the, both these clubs have got a good track record of finding talent. Yeah, absolutely. And it says there, what club would he be perfect for? And it says he's been linked with a move to Leicester to be reunited with Brendan Rodgers. It now seems that that's out of the window. His physical traits: he's a pacey striker and he's very comfortable on the ball. Again, David Moyes likes likes players with a little bit of pace about them, so he ticks that particular box. Um, his mentality. Now, this is the one thing that worries me 
Um, although, you know, there could be mitigating circumstances because it says here, perhaps this is the one negative about Edouard. He can appear lazy at times. So I'm sort of thinking, you know, that's Sebastian Heller in a little way because, you know, he was a lot of people looked at him and thought he was a little bit lazy. Um, but it says this season he's resembled a man desperate for a move. So maybe that's a mitigating circumstance. You know, maybe he he appeared lazy because he, quite frankly, didn't want to be at Celtic. Um, and then it goes on to say exactly what you said, Milesy. He's only got one left on one year left on his contract. He looks looks set for a move this summer. So yeah, I mean, for me, I, I think he's he's potentially he would be a very good signing. But we need to make sure that we're not paying over the odds. I mean, I would say fifteen million top whack, in my opinion. Yeah, but we'll uh... pay that. We'll pay that over fifteen years anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't, I don't know, Gareth. So we'll see how the window goes. I mean, it's all quiet at the moment. Um, what we just heard today is Moisey again, kind of repeating himself to say that he's he's looking to recruit a number of scouts to kind of fill that gap. So we're already in a better position in the December January window. I think it's too early to get scouts in now. So unfortunately, yeah, for one thing, another Sullivan. Didn't do it early enough. Didn't, didn't sign up. I would have signed up Moyes in January. Got the scouts in. So we're ready in the summer to go. But you, me, oh, yeah. and Miles, we think differently. And for some reason, Sullivan is just so slow at everything. Um, so it's going to take time. And Lingard and people like, we don't know what's going to happen to the budget. But I think we need about six people. And this is one of them. Yeah, all thumbs up from me, mate. But I just yeah. hope that whoever we want, especially the manager, we just go there and get it. And... So what is a few million over here and there? Just just get the deal done, you know. Get, yeah, get just, it just, yeah. I I agree. This is the thing. We 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 say it every summer since they've been in charge. The only time we've we've got transfers done early was when Sam came in, when he got Nolan and etc. What when did that they were in what, like the fourth of July or whatever it was? Yeah. Why can't why can't why can't we do that now? Just and, announce and it. Do, do you know what I mean? And another thing I mean, you to don't be forget fair, doesn't yeah, I was going to say, to, to be fair, an ex, I'm fairly sure, put a tweet out about this because it's the Euros and it's it's sort of like you're almost waiting for that first transfer to go through that then sets off the domino effect and then all the rest of them start kicking in. And because there's obviously a lot of players that are at the European Championships at the minute, you've also got the CONCACAF Gold Cup that starts in, in the next couple of weeks. So there's sort of a couple of major international tournaments that are in, in the pipeline and sort of ongoing at the minute. So it kind of makes it a little bit difficult for some clubs to maybe have the conversations with players that maybe they've got on their on their radar. So it might be that maybe yeah. a lot of the, the sort of like the negotiations between player and club and club and club, if you will, can't really sort of get underway at the minute because players are tied up, you know, in training camps and, and squads ahead and matches and all the rest of it. I don't think most of our players are tied up to tournaments, Kate. You look, you look at this guy, you look at Dakar, you look at Armstrong, you look at Lingard, none of them are tied to any tournament. No, no, there, so, there are yeah. some that aren't, obviously, but there'll, there'll be a, qu a yeah. quantity you know the the let, let's have it right most of the the top level players are going to be at the european championships mm. aren't they yeah so uh, yeah. It, it causes a little bit of a sort of like a, a log jam sort of thing once once the sort of like certain teams start to get knocked out and players can sort of go about their own business it then allows the clubs to maybe have that dialogue with players and sort of say hey this is what we can offer you do you know what i mean yeah no, i mean I, 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 yeah. yeah, no. So sorry, I, I I disagree somehow, Gatesy, because me, me, mm. Depay is is agreed terms with Barcelona. He's uh, playing for the Netherlands at the minute. I don't I don't know I don't yeah. know how how long that 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 that's been. And yeah, with regards to any any of the other players, we should have known about these for months. Like, what's the harm of us go, going and? Making an announcement like a week ago, we've completed the signing of. Yeah, I'm just yeah. giving it out there. Adam Armstrong, he joins on the first of July. Bang! Yeah, Another yeah, thing, yeah. one signing could change the feeling of the West Ham West Ham fans. Question: yeah, If we yeah. say How that, do you think... just, just... like with I was going to say though, because I mean, we said we said it before the we started the broadcast, and just to sort of say it so that 
the guys mm. in the live chat. And again, you you can put your feelings on this because I mean, I I remember going back in in years past where you'd open the paper and and there'd be a quote from someone at the club, be it David Sullivan, Jack Sullivan, or whoever, saying, "Oh, we we're looking to do this, or we've got this amount to spend, or this, that, and the other." And everyone's going keep your mouth shut, keep your powder dry, this, that, and the other. Now it seems to be that it's the complete reverse. We've, we've sort of like, we, it has gone quiet. It's radio silence. And now it's like, why aren't we announcing anything, this, that, and the other? And sort of part of me sort of asking the question that, you know, well, this is, this is kind of, this is what people wanted, isn't it? You know, we, we wanted the business to be kept hush, hush. And until the sort of like the the signature was on the dotted line, then announce it fine. No, but I mean, I mean, like transfers done. That's what I mean. Hmm. I don't mean talks. I mean, like, in my opinion, in my opinion, Moyes on the last game of the season should have went. Here's my targets. Go, go, go and do it. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't. We don't. That, that's. I, I don't want to seem like I'm being negative, but you know what no. David Sullivan. Do you know what David Sullivan's like? Like, he, he we're saying that we want. Like, he's bringing in his own. Um, like scouting stuff, like what Jazz said, this should have been done months ago. We're, we're, again, we're it, behind yeah. on a, we're, we're we're behind on projects, and like you, you, it, with this pandemic, the amount of people who are out of work, like, do you know what I mean? All we all we should be going to the likes of who's that? Lil, the Lil director or chief scout. Yeah, you know, we're doubling yeah. your wages. It's a Mickey Mouse league, isn't it? The French league. Yeah, you know, we're doubling your wages. Come and do your job for us. But no, we're, we're, we're too far behind. Even, even like you said, Brentford, yeah. look how much bigger we are than Brentford. We can grab where If you've got the right mindset and the right ambition, you can go and get anyone, you know. And don't forget how many clubs have only got a manager, Everton, Palace, Spurs. They're going to look for the same players we're looking for. If we don't tie those players up now, you know, as soon as hmm. I'm, I'm not sure if Rafa has been announced or not, but he's already got lists ready and they're not going to mess about. Villa are not going to mess about. Palace, yeah, they don't have too much money, but they always bring in one player a year, and they, they know who that is already. Yeah. And we've really got to take advantage of this period now. You know, we're set. We've got new. We've got manager tied up on the contract, and like 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 um, Marzi said, we we should have known months ago who our targets were. You know, and and and, yeah. and then you and everyone does get tapped up. We can't be naive. Everyone gets the feelers out. There. The players are talking and saying. If you get if you agree your price for the club, I'm more or less welcome. You you got to get in there. Do you think that part of the problem was because there was this protracted contract that David Moyes was going to sign, and then it took a obviously he signed it now. But do you think that kind of held things up a little bit? No, yeah, because he already no, because he already had the year anyway. If we finish above thirteenth, it automatically triggered a year. Everyone knew that that was that was made knowledge in January. No, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, is what I'm saying is because there was the story doing around Everton. that yeah. allegedly he he was he had a list of players that he was going to go to Sullivan with and say these this is my hit list. But because there was this sort of you know contract, oh, is he going to sign? It? Is he isn't he going to sign it? The story was, if you believe it, that he was keeping that list of players, you know, to himself until the contract was signed. Gatesy, I believe the story that Everton wanted David Moyes. And he, as a gentleman he is, he said, I can't leave this project. I can't let my players down. I've, I've achieved too much mm. in the time I've been there. And and, and on the back of that, they didn't like the Portuguese guy. They had a couple of interviews with him. There's something they weren't sure about. And rappers at eminent appointment is, is a shock. Like, they've gone backwards, which, well, they're our rivals. I'm happy to take Rafa, mate. Who the hell? You, you do not want someone who's already gone beyond his peak and towards the latter end of his years now you want a young you know someone who hasn't achieved a lot really i mean david's still got a lot to achieve in terms of winning trophies he's he's he's, he's fairly hard working consistent but he hasn't won anything near what rapper's won so there's still some hunger in there for david left with rapper i'm not sure how much hunger there is there apart from yeah, yeah they're going to give him 150 million that's why people like him and the previous manager came they haven't got time to do i don't think rapper was much of a person of bringing you for long he wanted the Finish articles, so yeah, yeah gotta be. Yeah, we got we got to move. We got to move. At least, like you said, um, get one over the line, and the whole yeah, starts a chain again. reaction, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. One we, we one gotta, move, yeah. and it doesn't necessarily have to be at West Ham. It could be at another club, but it then sets a, a chain in of events in sequence that sort of like you know, okay, right now everything else starts sort of going from there. Um, 
The other player that I wanted to discuss um, was Aaron Ramsey has been mentioned. Gazetta della Sport uh, has reported that it looks like he's on his way out of Juventus, the wayward fielder. And Just, West yeah. Ham are one of the clubs that are in, in the pipeline. The other two clubs that are apparently interested, so the story goes, are Crystal Palace and Everton. Andy, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, he'll be a great addition. Absolute great addition to the club. Um, everyone um, everyone said that he's had his injury problems, but um, I'm guessing you're mm. going to put the stats up. If you, it, more yeah. gates, I think he's played. I think his injury record over the last two or three years has not been as bad as what it, it originally was. Um, he's got European experience, like what you said. He's played in a different league. Um, and I could see him working well as a free in Europe with Rice and Suchak as a free, uh, boxing out the midfield and 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 and, and, and causing teams teams problems. But he, he, he yeah, he, he's uh, that's what he's on there. But I I agree, Steve. He he's he's on a lot here. of money. He, he won't get that there, and if it depends. He's thirty years of age. What, what does he want? Does he want one big? Mer- if if he if he wants the money, he'll go to America. But it depends if he's if he's that hungry. Maybe he thinks that he's got a point to prove in the Premier League, and probably uh, the only way we'll get him he's is still like you got said, something with... to offer. I mean, he's not. It's not like yeah. he's thirty-five for goodness' sake. He's. I think he's still got something to offer. I think if you know. He's gone to a. He's gone from a club like Arsenal to a, to a, you know one of the world's best clubs in Juventus. Say what you want, they are. And, and yeah. all right, I would say it's. I mean, sort of. I tell you what, I'll go. I'll, I'll show you. This is this has been his record this season. If you just look at this, and he's got another two years on his deal at Juventus. But look at this. The one thing that worries me, Miles E. Now, yeah. if I just scroll to the bottom because it tells you exactly he's been in the squad for Juventus, the season that's just finished. He's been in the squad 30 times out of the 38 league matches that they played in Serie A. He was in the starting 11 13 times. He was brought on as a substitute nine times. He was an unused sub eight times, and he was injured seven times. How many times do you suspect he completed 90 minutes in, the, in Serie A? None twice and they were right at the beginning of the season match day one and match day five were the only matches that he completed 90 minutes now i think he's a cracking player just for the record i think aaron ramsey is a very very good player however his injury his injury record does concern me but you could get you could it it depends yeah because the way Juvent- Juventus are going to do it is on 350 grand a week, yeah. So they're going to put the price thing up because we're not going to offer him 350 grand a week. Um, uh, the maximum I'd pay is probably 15 million. But then, like you said, if that's 15 minutes for Edward, 15 million for Ramsey, that's 30 million off our budget. Doesn't really give us a lot to play with. So, yeah, it would be a nice player, but unless we can get him in on loan. <laughs> for a year and maybe if an option to buy I'll, I'll, I think it's a lot well, of money I think that was one of the injury. things that, that's, I think that is actually what's been mentioned I mean oh, okay. just sort of quoting here and this is this is from uh, Media Referee and this was yesterday at quarter past nine p.m. Uh, yeah. It says the report mentions that Juventus could be open to a loan transfer for Ramsey with an option to buy the player at the end of his spell there you go so yeah, I'll, it, it I'll, that, that's potentially a, be a loan with an option to buy the usual tactic of Mr. Sullivan. I think he's um, too much injury prone for me. I wouldn't go for him at the age of 30. That would interest me. I, 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 I would look at Gilmore or Sandenberg as the holding players for the future. I really want to put quality players in there. They'll cost a lot more, but the, this is what we got to do as a club. We, we got to, and I would even do it on the back of not getting enough numbers through the door. If we can get two high, high quality players for the for the future of the club and the rest on really low fees or frees, then every window we're bringing in two who are so good that they go straight into the 11 or certainly the future of the club instead of 
31 year olds, 30 year olds who are going to still cost a reasonable amount and injury prone. Aaron Ramsey just reminds me of Jack Wilsh a little bit, not to that level, certainly not to that level, but yeah, I'd rather go with them, especially Gilmore after, I was mentioning Gilmore before that game, Gates, so you know that, and even after the England Scotland game, I just love that guy, and he's not getting a game with Chelsea. They don't even send him alone anywhere. They need to make up their minds what they want to do with him. And and Sandenberg, because of his utility, he will be the next future really good box to box player. He he can play as a right back, wing back, help out centre back, but certainly in the defensive. So I like him. Yeah, he's going to be twenty five million, but it's what you got to do if you want to move up to the next level. So. Yeah, not not for me, but yeah, good player, good chap to have around, but a bit too many injuries just for me. And it'll go back to what we used to do in the past, like Yamalenko and that kind of thing. I just want to stay away from that and just look at young, hungry players, yeah. I think. I don't think he comes in the, the young, that... young, hungry and bracket for me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, how how hungry is a guy going to be that for the last two, three years has been earning 350k in Italy? And as I say, you look at his stats in Serie A last season, he, he completed 90 minutes twice. That does concern me. You know, yeah. fundamentally, that, you know, he, he was in the squad 30 times and he completed 90 minutes twice. And it was two games right at the beginning of the season. So from match day five onwards to match day 38, he didn't complete another 90 minutes all season. Now that that really is a worry. I mean, and I'm I don't for one minute think that he's gonna get 350k coming to West Ham. He's not gonna get anywhere near that. But he's gonna command a fairly big and hefty wage. Whether we get him on loan with an option to buy, whether we purchase him straight off the bat, he's not he's gonna come for a fair chunk of change. Now, if we're gonna be spending that sort of money in terms of wages on a player, then you need to be getting someone in that is going to be hitting the ground running and playing more often than not, I would suggest. I think but, you're going to notice that Barcelona are coming in for a lot of these players at this amount of money. Barcelona are skin. Real Madrid ain't got too much money. So well, they've made three... They made free signings, haven't they? All free transfers, I believe. Yeah, they? there you go. And they're, they're sniffing around Ramsey as well. So that, that'll be that's going to be interesting. Is this someone after anyone who's next to nothing and they're in for him because they haven't got any money? But this is this just proves, like two years ago, probably under Pellegrini, this would be our number one target. Moyes has got yeah. a different ethics ethics on the way he wants to do business and he, he's looking at these younger younger players so like the Sufat probably I, I think the maximum Moyes is probably going to look unless a real gem comes up probably 25 26 maximum probably in age the maximum yeah. he'll, he'll look yeah. high and, and, and that's what I've got a lot of respect for him for but it, I just don't want this summer this is I don't want this like the first season at the London Stadium when we bring in flipping Torre and people like that. Like this, this can't happen. And I, I, I've just got my fingers crossed that Moyes, Moyes that does it. But I just want, I just want a sign in. I don't care. Like we just need a a marquee sign in to to get the foundations for this season. Otherwise, we're going to be sitting here. This, um, this is yeah, yeah, yeah. This is so critical. It's Moyes is really stubborn. Sullivan don't know, and that's what that's what Miles is indicating is we could end up with next to hardly anyone because of the clash, and so this is going to really on the show. But if he has signed a contract, which looks like it, then a number of promises have been made, which is reassuring me now. You oh, wouldn't yeah. have signed that contract until he said, "I'm controlling it. I want this much money." I want this many scouts in. I want an extra more team in the background. I want a better training ground. And th- that's what took so long, I think. Sullivan was really in the corner and like, didn't know what to do. Obviously, anyone can break promises. We know that. <laughs> Sullivan. Mm-hmm. But but let's see what happens. This is this. is We're at such a crucial point. Where are we going to go? Are we going to go back to the old it, West Ham again? Or are we because really like going to? Yeah. Like you said, Jazz, yeah, we're Tottenham, yeah? Tottenham in a minute, probably just before... The last season, it was probably like that gap between us. Now it's slowly getting smaller and smaller, and we need to take advantage of that now. Oh, I can't Tottenham, Tottenham owes yeah. so much money 
yeah. on that stadium. Well, they've got the ridiculous. biggest bet of any club in Europe, I heard the other day, and that was out of the mouth of Daniel Levy himself. They they do, but they're paying interest only on next to nothing interest rate of 1% or 2%. And the actual lump sum is rolled forward every 20 years, so they'll never pay it off. And on the back of that, their match day income compared to ours is through the roof. And that's where he operates. But if he doesn't get Champions League, that's a big dent, which is happening now. That's why no manager wants to wants to go there. So they have got an issue. Yeah, top four they wouldn't. They do. We are yeah, we're kind of there or there. I mean, we don't get much much day income. We have the kind of sponsor the stadium. We've got still got issues, but we but what interesting point is that they would they're looking to bring an investor in with more money than them, or certainly can be more more willing to spend more money than them and give them a percentage. I think even though they've got the money, they just don't want to. They just don't want to take the money out. They're that tight. They just don't want to do it. And then I think they're looking to bring someone else in that willing to spend a bit more for a little percentage of the club. I think that's what I'm hearing. But yeah. let's all, let's see what happens. But I am I'm really and this is the most intriguing market I've seen for men. This this is really pinnacle. Are we going to go back to the normal West Ham? This was a fluky season. Let's go back to. 16th, 14th, 13th, yeah. back to normal again? Or are we really going to build on this? And it's it's dangerous moment for the owners, you know? If they don't, and we're back at the ground, then the old voices will reappear again. The negativity will come back. Um, seriously, this is really pinnacle moment for Sullivan. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. we don't often, you know, and you said it, we, we don't often have a season where we have relative success and, and, you know, finishing sixth in the Premier League and qualifying for the Europa League, for us, that is relative success. All right, it might not be relative success for a Manchester City, a Liverpool or a team like that, but for us, that is relative success. But the trick is to sort of like do that two, three, four seasons on the bounce. Now, very often, like the last season at the Bolin, we obviously finished seventh, we got into the Europa League that that season and we then went out and signed star names like Havard Nordvite, Sofiane Faguli, uh, Gokan Torre, Jonathan Caleri, Simone Zaza, the list went on. And we were very, very lucky that we didn't re- get relegated the following season. Now, I happen to think that David Moyes is a bit more, with the greatest of respect to Slav and Bilic, but I think that... Yeah. David Moyes has a bit more about him yeah. in terms of his experience level with the you know Premier League and all the rest of it, you know, to allow that to happen. But you know, fundamentally, we need to put two seasons, you know, back to back of you know, like I say, for us, relative success. Now, for me, next season, relative success would be if we can go fairly deep in Europe. And when I say fairly deep, maybe yeah. last 16, last eight, maybe a, maybe a sort of like a domestic cup run, whether that's the League Cup or the FA Cup, again, maybe getting to sort of like, say, a quarterfinal stage or beyond. And if we could finish doing all of that, if we could finish in the top eight, top 10, do you know what? I'd actually say that would be a fairly decent season when you sort of like tie up the amount of games that we'd have to play and all the rest of it. I'd, I'd say that would be fairly good. But if we was to sort of go out of the, the Europa League in the group stage, don't get very far in the Cups and finish 13th, 14th in the Premier League, then I'd be sort of sitting there thinking it's an opportunity missed. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. and on, on the back of a poor transfer window, isn't it? That, it, would, it would happen on the back of a mm. poor transfer window, all those things. And then, yeah, it wouldn't be good. Yeah. yeah. Milesy? Yeah, oh. I, I, I'm trying to be positive, mate. I, I am, but if if we go into that stadium, the first home game of the season on that Monday night against Leicester, and we've got no 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 one who as West Ham, we're not. I'm not being unrealistic, but if we go in with players who we're not expecting or what Moyes is expecting, I, I'm dreading that game. No matter what the result we get against Newcastle, because that will turn. And it will be toxic, and it will be burning all over again. Yeah. Uh, uh, they need to spend. Yeah. They need to spend. We've not been able to get to them Definitely. for what eighteen months. They need to spend. Yeah, 
No, no. And to be fair, I, I agree with what Jazz said. I think that possibly the reason why David Moyes, it, it took a little bit longer than we was all expecting for the contract to be signed was probably because David Moyes was after certain assurances from the hierarchy and specifically Mr. Sullivan about, yeah. you know, sort of like, you know, where the, the power lies as far as transfers are concerned, what budget he's going to have and all the rest of it. So I, I think that, you know, because the contracts are signed, I'd like to think that David Moyes was given the assurances that he's needed and that he's going to have, he's the one in control from this point on. So we're not going to have the sort of like the meddling and players being parachuted in that quite clearly don't fit into the David Moyes ethos, mm. if you will. I think so, so, yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, I think it's a bit of both, isn't it? I think we want them quickly because, like I said, I, I'm, I'm listing six players we need. So we don't want to leave it too late to get that many people over the line. Um, mm. And we don't want to play Russian roulette where they, Daniel Lee style, oh, yeah, let's wait until an hour to go and then maybe you can get five million off off the bill if we, you know, but who knows that they might not be there. And it's a very pinnacle season for Ben Rama as well. It's a huge season for him. As, as a really big, big money signing for us, and, and hopefully he'll he'll cement his place in the team and and show us what he what he can do in in kind of moments. So, and also we're all worried about. I mean, Ben Rahm is a separate issue, but we all got this thing in our mind: is, was he David signing? Was he not? And as Sullivan really found out now that I can't mess about with David, and I, I gave him Ben Rahm, and he's not really played him as much or not trusted him as much as. So next time, I better not just do it. You know, I did it with Sam. I used to bring in presents to the training ground. Here, Sam, yeah. here's a couple of players here for you. Or bit of chairs, <laughs> you know. And, he's, and then the manager will say, who are you? What's your name? Which position who the hell's you play? This? You know, so hopefully Salem is like, oh, my God, I've met my match here. I can't mess about with him. And um, and that's why Scott Scotland, a lot of managers come from Scotland who are great. You know, Bill Shankly, Alex Ferguson, Loads of players, managers, and they're very, very strong individuals. They don't, they don't really. They're pretty focused, and yeah, they, they kind of just do their job and not care about anyone. So, yeah, so just we, we're not little fans, and we just want that first really, really good signing. And we can say, "Wow, yeah, we're on the way here." You know, yeah, good signing, mate. I yeah. mean, Neil makes Neil makes the point, and he's right. I mean, are there any other teams? If we sort of like just limit it to the Premier League, I know Milesy said about. Um, uh, Memphis Depay going to Barcelona on a free. But there's not really been any other Premier League teams that have come out and said, oh, we've signed this player, we've signed that player, have they? So, you know, the fact that we haven't, you know, nobody else has really either, in fairness. Yeah, but but we shouldn't be waiting for anyone else. We should be different. We should be making a statement to everyone else. We we should be we should be the ones making the change, not like the likes of uh, Man United. When I think, um, like, yeah. Man United are close to getting Sancho. They've already put a bid in and it just needs a little bit higher and it'd be over the line. Yeah. Um, Leicester, imminent Daco arrival, which will pee all of us mm. off. So clubs are getting there. Villa ain't going to be quite too long, trust me. They're, they'll be burning to get in there with one or two. And, and like you, we said, as soon as Tottenham's new manager comes in and other clubs, we've got to get in there. We've got to get in there. Yeah, fair enough. So... Odson Edward was a thumbs up from all three of us, just to recap. However, Aaron Ramsey seems to have split us. Milesy, you, you were for, for the signing, were you not? Yeah, only with a loan and option Ramsey. to buy. Loan to option yep. to buy, not not a permanent, but yeah. Yeah. I think me, myself and Jazz, we're a little bit more concerned about nah. his, yeah. his injury record and probably how much he's going to ask for as a wage I, I think he's you know he's I, I know he's not like I say he's not going to be asking well he might ask for 350k a week but he ain't going to bloody get it well him um, and Bale are very similar stories him and Bale lots of injuries high wages great players when they do play but how often do they play and how wealthy are they now so <laughs> Luke. Oh, Luke that's terrible Jerry Francis that's terrible. Je oh Jerry yeah. Francis hair he used to make me laugh he's bloody wig whatever yeah. it was Peter Shreve. There you oh, go. Wow. Yeah. All good. Anyway, thanks for you guys that have been in the live chat. We do appreciate you getting involved. 
And um, as I say, guys, for, for those of you that are new to the channel, please subscribe. Um, hit the bell icon to be notified of any new content and just drop a like on the video. It's all much appreciated and it goes an awful long way to keeping this channel growing. Um, the one other thing I want to try and sort of um, get across to you guys, um, the usual thing, I mean, those of you that are regulars here will know that we're big supporters of the campaign to get Isla Caton uh, the treatment that she needs to, to keep her alive. It's as simple as that. Now, that Just Giving page there it has changed recently in the, in the last uh, couple of days. So that's just something to make you aware of. Um, this is in the description below the um, YouTube and Facebook stream. So you can copy it, paste it on your your. Um, social media platforms. I'm not actually asking you for any money as such to begin with. Um, just put it on your social media, get the momentum going. If you can put some money in the pot, don't let me stop you. But just at the very <laughs> least, could you put it on your social media platforms with a little note that this is for a little girl who's got a really rare form of cancer and she can't get the treatment in this country. So her family have got to take her abroad. Um, so they need all the help you can get. So, you know, put it on your social media platforms. Let's try and keep the momentum going. And uh, you know, I've said it before, I've said it again. Um, this girl, the clock is ticking for this girl. It seriously is. And for those of you that know, um, her mum put out a video the other day where it painted a fairly stark picture of, of what this little girl's going through. So you, we can't be mucking about here. We can't be sort of like sitting there going, oh, I'll do it next week. I'll do it next month, whatever, because, you know, next week, next month, who knows what the situation is going to be. So you know, let's let's try and come together, guys, not just as West Ham fans or as football fans, but as, you know, as decent human beings. Um, also, uh, let's also draw your attention to the little appeal that we've got going. And this was Milesy's brainchild, the hashtag Forge Goals for Isla. Now, we said at the beginning of the Euros that we would give £5 per goal uh, at the European Championships that England scored. Now, it wasn't Isla's fault, bless her, uh, that England stunk the joint out against Scotland. So what I did is I, I looked at the expected goals of 1.62. I rounded it up to two and said, OK, fine, I'm going to sling a tenner in anyway, whatever. So, you know, if any if anybody wants to do something similar, I'm not suggesting that it has to be five pound a goal. Whatever's gonna comfortable do, yeah, with any of you guys. Do... I was going to do 10, but do you pay at the end of the tournament? Makes sense, doesn't it? I'm going well, I'm I'm to do mine. Again, yeah. I've, I've been doing do... mine as it goes along. But again, oh, it's what, okay. if, you know, if somebody turned around and said, look, I'm just going to put 20 quid into the pot. I'm going to put the five in yeah, the pot. I'm going to put, yeah, you know, whatever it is. Like, guys, everybody's got different sort of like levels of comfort. You know, what's, what's sort of like acceptable, what's not, and all the rest of it. It's not for me to say. I'm comfortable with five pound a goal. Somebody else might not be. So... You know, guys, if there's anything you can contribute, again, if you're on Twitter, do us a favour, um, link us in on, on a tweet, put the hashtag Forge Goals for Isla and just let us know what you're putting into the pot. I'll tell you what, um, on, on, under Southgate, it should be £20 a goal the way we're playing under him. Jesus uh, Christ. Yeah. Well, should we do shots? Yeah. On, should we just do shots on target? Oh, my God. We're we're not even, hey, we don't even do that. We don't even do that, mate. Oh, my God. Oh, that's ridiculous. Long, longer Sterling plays so every game. Go. That's what counts. Yeah, but that's me moaning. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, gentlemen, I'm going to end the stream there. I'm going to hit the end credits and end the broadcast shortly thereafter. Thank you to all you guys that have been in the live chat. We Again, we really do appreciate your participation. And, and you know, without you guys, we... You know, we're just sitting here waffling to ourselves. So thanks for getting involved. <laughs> Only one thing left to say for Mr. Miles. We are fucking massive. Jazz. Too big, Come mate. on, you Too irons. big. Too big. <laughs> <laughs> Stay safe, guys. <laughs> we'll have a great Sunday, everyone.